Hey guys, what is up? It's me, Croft Studios, and I'm here with a new Star Wars set review, and it's a pretty big size set, I'd have to say. It's uh, Palpatine's Arrest, set 9526, 645 pieces, ages 9 to 14, and it retails for $90, like an outrageous $90. So, um, I'm going to show you the box really quick. Before I show the box, I forgot to tell you guys that in this episode, I will be having another find the bunny. So you're going to be finding the bunny in this episode. Do not put in the beginning of the video. Do not put that in the comments. You will not win. I'm just telling you that you will find the bunny later in the video, not here. So do not comment that the bunny is in the beginning of the video when you're showing the set. So don't say that. So it's going to be further in the video. Here is a quick look at the front of your Palpatine's Rest box. And here is the back of your box. This set includes one instruction booklet, and it's a pretty thick one, actually, really thick. Um, and once you reach the end, you got some sets that you can buy. Um, we go through here. You got Lego Star Wars 3 ad, Star Wars Assault game, and the bag. You got the Screaming Kid on every single instruction manual. So let's take a look at our figures. Okay, our first minifigure here is Agent Kolar, and he is an exclusive figure to the set. And I just have to say he's a pretty good figure. Um, like his he his head mold's pretty cool. I really like that head mold that they use, like with the back and stuff. Really nice looking head mold. And uh, when you take that, it's sort of hard to get off with the cape and stuff like that. But once you get that off, you get some nice face printing, some nice torso printing. Um, he just looks really cool, and he also does feature some nice back printing. Back here, you can see that. Some uh, really nice looking back printing actually. Sort of looks like Mace Windu from the back actually. Like you'd think this is Mace Windu without his hat actually. But um, but when you turn around you can see it's Agent Kolar. Uh, you can see his blue lightsaber. He features a little blue lightsaber. And it's not um, a bunch of other Jedi have blue lightsabers. Uh, like Anakin and stuff like that. But he's a really cool figure. So let's move on to our next minifigure. Okay, up next is Kit Fisto, and he is exactly the same except for his torso, I'm pretty sure. Um, his head mold is exactly the same as the older one that came in the uh, ARC-170 Starfighter. But uh, he's got a really cool looking head mold. Just the head molds in this set are really nice. Like the back, it is the same as the old one, but it's still cool to get an, uh, another Kit Fisto. When you take this off, you get some nice torso printing. And it is like rubbery plastic, you can sort of bend it around and stuff. But he's got green lightsabers, so, um, pretty cool printing on the torso. And I don't know if he has back printing. He does not feature any back printing. So um, he is actually a pretty nice minifigure. Uh, so he's not the best Jedi in the set, I have to say, but he is a really cool looking Jedi. So let's move on to our next figure. Okay, up next we got one of my favorite Jedi in the set, Sese Tin, or Sese Tin, some people call it, I don't know why. But um, Sese Tin, he has a really cool looking headpiece. I mean, that piece just looks sweet. I really love it. Like, even better than Agent Kolar's headpiece right there. It just looks, well, looks really, really cool. I, um, he features a green lightsaber. When you take off his hat, you got some printing under the head, if you uh, would like to do that. like use the head for something else. I don't know why you'd want to, but you got some really cool looking back printing right there. Um, most of these Jedi feature back printing except for uh, Kit Fisto and uh, Mace Windu. But um, I mean it's just really cool looking back printing. I really love this figure. He's just way better than the Clone Wars one that comes in the Sese Tin Starfighter. Just way better figure than Sese Tin Starfighter one. So let's move on to our next Jedi. Okay, up next we have one of the coolest Jedi in this set, which is obviously Mace Windu, one of my favorite Jedi of all time. He is one of the sweetest Jedi with a purple lightsaber. He's got some pretty cool looking torso printing. He doesn't have any back printing. He's just got a cape right there. But I really love his purple lightsaber and all that. His headpiece is very nice. And uh, he does not have any leg printing. He's sort of basic, but it's just awesome. Like, Mace Windu is, like, one of the best, like, Jedi ever. So that's basically it for Mace Windu. So let's move on to 
Dark Anakin. Okay, up next we have Anakin Skywalker, and he is a way better version than all the others. Just fantastic. The headpiece is the same, uh, the hat piece is the same than uh, the other Anakins, but it's just way better face. The Clone Wars one sucks. It's just terrible. Um, but the torso, leg printing, he's got like boots and stuff like that. Really cool looking torso printing. Really cool blue lightsaber and all that. Um, and he does have some back printing once you move his cape. It sort of looks like it, it could be front printing if you wanted to. Like you could sort of switch it around if you wanted to. But uh, you could just leave it the same. I'm probably just going to leave it the same right here. But um, it looks really great. I mean they just did way better version of any Anakin on this one. This, this figure is just really awesome. Um, so let's move on to Palpatine which I think was a pretty bad figure. Okay, last up for the figures is Palpatine, of course, or Senator Palpatine. Um, or you could call him Darth Sidious if you wanted to. But why the gold lightsaber? What What is the gold hilt for? That's not right. It's supposed to be black. That just doesn't make any sense. It's not movie accurate. I don't know why they did that. It's cool to get a gold hilt, I guess, but it's not movie accurate. I mean, if you want it to be completely movie accurate, you change that to a black hilt. And he would have black robes on, now, not dark red robes from the Clone Wars, not that. He'd have different robes on. But his head printing is, I have to admit, pretty good. He ju they just used a Mandalorian hairpiece that they used on uh, Pre Vizsla. He's got double-sided head, actually. Um, when you twist him around right here, he does got a double-sided head. Pretty cool face. He does have a slight back printing, I guess. But they just did an okay job on this guy. I don't know why they gave him red clothes. I'm pretty sure I'm correct on this, like, that he wore black robes from the movie, not red. They should have a black hilted lightsaber. So, let's move on to the set itself. On to the actual set itself. We got a little plane, I guess you could say. I'm going to show that first of all. That's like the first thing inside of this set. And it's a pretty dinky little plane, I have to say. Um, just, wow, Lego. Um, like, the stickers are okay, I guess. But what is this? So there's like huge, massive holes in there. And the figure barely fits inside either, I have to say. Um, you do got flick missiles? Really? Lego, every single Star Wars set, you gotta have flick missiles. Just a fun little feature that you add in for some reason. But the piece actually broke off when I tried putting the flick missile in, and that happens often for me, actually. So I put the flick missile back in right here, put it back on there. But that does often happen for me. But uh, the back is, like, sticking backwards. That looks a little weird. But these sort of move around. I, I guess that's supposed to be a feature. I don't know. But um, it's cool. The sticker really right here looks really cool. You can lift that up. But the cockpit just looks pretty bad since the figure just uh, barely fits inside. Anakin barely fits inside this plane. So there's a quick look at the bottom of it and how it fits into the next feature. So I'm gonna show you the landing pad first of all and rip it off the main set. Really a big feature in this set. You can disconnect these little pieces right here. And you can also disconnect the doors. So I'm going to start off by showing you this right here, which is a landing pad. And it's a pretty dinky landing pad. I mean, it's like barely any pieces at all. I mean, it probably took them literally five minutes to design this, I bet you. Or 20 if they really thought about it. But I don't think they really did take much time on this thing. It's just really dinky. They put a, could have put more pieces in it to add pieces to the set. But they just left it at 600-something pieces for an outrageous price, but um, let me put this down. You can hook the plane on here. Um, you can hook the plane inside of there, and it sort of moves around a bit, but it fits in pretty well. You can spin it. Looks kind of cool, actually. But um, that is the landing pad, so over here is the doors. Um, there's not much about them. You got some gold pieces down there. Look kind of cool. You can open them up like this. And it sort of wiggles around a little bit, but not, it's pretty locked in. But the door is not very big. Like, in the scene of Palpatine's arrest, all four Jedi walk in the same door at the same time, but you can barely fit one of them in. 
like Kit Fisto, he can barely fit through right there, as you could see. And uh, the doors are okay, I guess, but not size accurate. But it is cool how they open up like this. So let's move on to the main part of the set and show how this all connects. Here is the main part of Palpatine's rest right here, which is the office room. And I do have to say they did a quite well job with this, actually, except for that, the fact there are no walls in the room. It, I guess it's for playability, but you could have put walls there that just detach very easily. You can replace and stuff like that. But they sort of just made it like a really hard uh, design right here, so you can do that type of thing. So you do got these really, really cool looking pieces right here. They're, I guess, little gold people from uh, LEGO Games. They have these little miniature people that you use, and you get two of them, one on this side. Uh, you got some red carpet right there. They used a really cool technique right here for uh, when they moved and put these together. They made it like sort of like wing pieces connect together. It looks really cool. So let's take a look inside of the main office area. Inside of the office room right here you got some little spinning chairs with a jet I can spin around in. They're pretty cool looking actually, I really like those. You got these cool looking pieces right here, I don't know what they are. But the desk is, I don't, I don't know why I really like this desk though. It's like a really sideways looking design, it's really cool. They did leave these two studs open but they could have put pieces there to make them look a little cooler. But they didn't, but whatever. So we're going to move on to a playability feature that I think is quite bad to be honest. Feature with this right here is that you're supposed to fling Chancellor to attack the Jedi, but he flings in the sort of direct wrong direction. Right there, you can sort of see how he flicked off. Um, I don't know how that's really a fun feature. I guess you can flick him off, I guess. I, I don't know how much fun that's going to be for younger kids. I guess you can jump off, but that's only limited playability. So let's move on to the next feature. Inside of Palpatine's office, you got these little hidden things right here, which hold Palpatine's lightning. Um, you get these two lightning pieces that I did not show in the beginning. You can see them right here. They are pretty cool looking lightning pieces actually. So, um, that's where they fit in there. It's red piece, you can sort of flick it up like that. So, I will show you the other side that holds the lightsaber. And on the side of the office too, you can flick this up and you can hold the lightsaber in this little hole type thing right here. It looks pretty cool. Got a lightsaber. The feature is actually just okay. And you can uh, place the figure here. It looks like it'd be sort of unstable since it moves around like that. But you can actually place a figure there and it will not break because it's got some cool Technic pieces holding it up. So it will not break and fall and your whole set will be ruined. So we're going to move on to the main feature of the set which is Mace Windu dying I guess you could say. Okay so here is the main feature of the set where you basically pull this mob on, or, uh, knob on the side. I will show you that once I do this feature I will show you how it functions. You basically like pull a little knob and it's supposed to fall but sometimes it does not work like that. That's how it's supposed to work. You take Palpatine out of there and show you one more time how that works. Move that in. And you place them here and you pull the knob and it falls. I guess it's an okay feature I guess but um, it is cool how they functioned it and stuff. So I'm going to show you how that little feature functions on the other side. To activate that window feature you pull this little knob right here on the side and the window does fall. So that is a pretty cool feature. So I'm going to show you some less second details and then I can move on to the rating. I did also want to show you this little control pad that's on his desk. It is an older, like, it's not new or anything, but it looks pretty cool that it's on his desk and stuff. I wanted to show you the detail of that. And also his chair is very nice too. When you look at that, you just think it's an evil emperor boss chair. It is really cool. So let's move on to the final rating of this set. Okay guys, now for the rating on the set, which is highly anticipated by my brother. He's been wanting me to give my rating on this for a long time. Now I finally give my rating. I was thinking around a 7. I was thinking around an 8. So I'm giving it a 
just because the doors are not big enough to fit the figures through. The ship is pretty dinky, but it's cool looking. The do like I just don't like that the doors, like you can't fit all figures through at the same time. Like in the movie, they can barely even fit two. So the window feature's okay. The flick feature where you hit it and the figure flies off is just bad. I don't think Lego even thought. They just wanted to put in a feature and they put in that. Also, they put in the cool looking chairs and desk. That is a really cool looking feature. I wish they would have put some sort of walls in though that you could put on there and detach very easily. It is a pretty good set though. It's not horrible, not great. Just a 7.5 in there. So basically like if I had to give it like a letter grade, I guess I'd give it like a C. So that is basically it for this review guys. Look for more LEGO reviews. Rate, comment, and subscribe to my channel.